All right. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the metal shop. Today, we're working on the dashboard, working on the gauges. Now, even though I ended up not being able to use this original CSX piece for the 427SC Cobras, I was able to use it as a template. And this is how I want my gauges to look. I just like this layout better. I like it better than the speedometer and the tack on either side of the steering wheel or the speedometer and the tack in the middle of the dash, like in the 289 cars. This is how I liked it. So what I ended up doing was, sorry, my drill just wants to fall over here. I lined everything up. You can see that. Um, I drew a center line. It's tough to see. The center line on the dash to a center line on the CSX part. And I got everything marked. It was easier to do from the back side uh, because it's just sat flat as a template. I already got a couple of holes drilled. I got away, got a little bit ahead of myself before realizing, ooh, I'd like to film this. Now this one didn't line up because uh, the original Cobras, the steering column was basically not much bigger than, you know, three quarters of an inch or an inch coming through and it was aligned to this side of this hole. As you realize this is set up for the Chevy, the large steering column coming through. So this one, this hole had to be moved up a little bit out of the way. Um, so what I do is, and I drill these pieces here out of the door blank on the car. You know, the door has to be cut out. So I'd have pieces to line up so I could get my center holes just right. And then I drilled the small one too. So I got those lined up. I am, you know, trying to be precise here. I have the 427 layout. I found these handy things online about the Smith's gauges. These diagrams showing exactly how big they are, how big the hole needs to be. And it's a little bit deceiving because you need to drill the hole a little bit bigger than the gauge itself because what's gonna happen is, and we'll flip this over here, you are going, and, and I just, these are rough, I roughly transferred this, the, the measurements over onto this side, that's why the holes don't line up, and I put it up against the car just to you know get one last look to see how it goes. Anyway, you're gonna cover this with vinyl. So we'll cover the whole thing with vinyl, and then I'll cut this out, and we'll fold and wrap the vinyl under. So you're gonna lose about an eighth of an inch of the hole, if you think about the vinyl being glued all the way around, so you have to take that into account. Otherwise, it's too, it, you don't want to be too small. You don't want to be too big, but you don't want to be, if you're too small, you get your vinyl glued down, your gauge won't go in. And then, you know, what are you, you're going to cut away the vinyl. It's just to, to look accurate, to look good, you need the vinyl needs to wrap around. There needs to be the right amount of room. So, like I said, what I'm doing is I'm drawing from the backside where my measurements are, are perfect. And then I'll come around to the front with the hole saw and I picked, picked these up. I got the, the, the right size hole saws. Most kits don't have the right size hole saws. You need a four inch hole saw and that is expressly, explicitly laid out in the Nysonger uh, directions for the, for the 100 millimeter gauges. Um, four inch for the big gauges and two and one eighth for your smaller gauges. So what I'm doing is I'm just drilling and vacuuming up all the nasty fiberglass dust as I go. So let's see. Not sure I'll be able to accomplish this one-handed without you know making a big mess. Like I said, these are just approximate. The 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 mapping out the diagram on the back side is the one that's a hundred percent accurate. So and this. A brand, nice brand new hole saw really works nicely. And that's really all there is to it. So, I'm going to get the rest of these holes drilled out and you can rejoin me once they're all set and ready to go. Cool gauges. And there it is, one four inch. 
control. That the harbor is so heavy, the drill always falls over. Sweet, one more left. All right, so here's where we're at. Um, I had, the, like I said, the accurate marks are on the back side. So what I did was I took a spade bit so that it would come through and punch just a tiny little hole, which you can see right there. That's what I did. And remember, this was just inaccurate marks just to kind of give me a feel for the layout. The accurate marks were on the back side. So I did that with a spade bit just to drive a small hole. Then I came around to the top side. I used the same half inch spade bit just to score the fiberglass. These need to be 9 16 holes for the Lucas dip switches, the throw switches there. This one I'm going to use for the horn. That one needs to be bigger, about 3 quarters of an inch. I need to measure for the, um, that's going to be the ignition switch there. That's just going to be a light. These light switches need to be a half an inch so I can actually use the spade bit, the half inch spade bit that I have here to drill the, the, the holes for the lights. One, two, and three here. So I'm going to drill those up. I'm going to drill these five at nine sixteenths. This one's going to be three quarters and I need to measure out for the ignition switch. That's just a 1966 uh, Thunderbird Mustang Bronco um, ignition switch because that's what I wanted to use. That's not exactly period accurate, but I I like the way that it looks. It looks better. Honestly, the Lucas switch that it came with, they're hard to come by, they're expensive, and they look pretty chintzy in my opinion. So Ford switch going in the reproduction Ford switch is going in there. So let's uh, let's get these uh, holes drilled up. Cool. All right, so we're good. Got the whole thing laid out, drilled out like I wanted. So this ended up being, this is an inch and an eighth for the stock 66 Ford ignition switch. And I double checked to make sure that it has room for the assembly to go behind it. I luckily picked up a set of these, uh, I don't know what, step drill bits, Christmas tree drill bits, whatever. And I used that and it was kind of a pain to get to inch and an eighth drilling from the top and the bottom, but I did that. I used micrometers to measure the threads of the switches and the lights and you know the horn button everything to get it precise and I do, again these are slightly oversized to make up for there's going to be this is going to be covered in vinyl um, I also you can see here I am going to make use of this I am going to put a brace in here with the, uh, the standoffs that the fact you know they look just like the, the factory Cobra has theirs was part of the frame Mine will be just structural just to hold this to hold the dash in place. But you can see I did drill this out. And what that's for are my fresh air cables. And these are period correct fresh air cables. Um, they put them all over the place. I want to make use of this little tray here. Um, on Cobras, they generally put them on either side of the dash. I don't really like the way that looks having a weird switch out here in space. So I elected to make use of this. So those are drilled out. Um, one thing, don't forget, and I did make use of this, as you can see, make sure that you have a block, not necessarily for the hole saws. The hole saws do a nice job, but drilling these smaller ones, whether you're using a spade bit or a regular bore bit, you're going to want this on the back side to catch the drill. And that way, with the fiberglass, you don't get chip out. It's good for wood, too. Um, you're using another piece of wood so you don't get chip out. Uh, I forgot on the very first hole, and that's probably the worst one right there. So overall, I am very pleased. I still have to fit this back up to the car because there's a couple of of mounts, a couple of screws that will go, you know, thus, you know, roughly one in this area, one in that area that bolt it to that big stanchion there. But overall, you know, very, very productive day. What I plan on doing, I'll get those last couple holes drilled, not today. I've lost the daylight. It's super cold. We're having a wicked cold snap here. It's down well below freezing to the 20s, and there's no heat and no insulation in that, that garage. So, so I'll get those couple of holes drilled, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this thing inside to the basement where so I can have some heat, and I'm going to cover this thing with vinyl. And if you'll see if we sweep the camera over here, right there, that is the vinyl I'm going to use 3M contact adhesive, and I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna cover this with vinyl. 
this is a lot of people have done a lot of different things. I've seen carbon fiber, I've seen wood, black vinyl <laughs> is what they did. So it's going to be black vinyl. It's going to be nice. It's going to wrap all the way around. Again, strong 3M contact adhesive. I'll do it inside so that I have the warmth. All right. So we'll close out this section of drilling out the dash layout for the Cobra replica. My friends, I uh, sincerely appreciate your support. Please uh, give me a like. Click that subscribe if you are new to the channel. I hope you're finding the Cobra series of videos interesting and I'm still responding to all of my comments. So please hit me up in the comments. What do you like? What don't you like? Any questions? I answer everything. All right, my friends, take care. Bye-bye. Cobra. Whoosh.